Asia Tencent, who is visiting us for a couple of weeks. And uh, today we will talk about high risk vectors in process decomposition. So please, Misha. It's a pleasure to be here. Always, it's always a pleasure to be here. Thank you for the invitation. Thank you for coming. Um, uh, I'm, so the title is here. I'm going to talk about cassette decomposition. And uh, cassette construction is quite popular construction in serial vertex algebras. People uh, uh, call many things by cassette. But uh, actually here, by cassette, uh, uh, I I'm, I'm more or less mean the very class. Uh, the, uh, the original construction. So the probably I believe that the first cassette construction was done by Goddard, Kent, and Olive, like in the 80s, and they uh, take, uh, considered the following: they took SL2, a fine SL2 on some level K, uh, then they took another fine SL2 on the level one. They take their sum. And they observe that here you can find, first of all, you can find diagonal SL2, which is now we have level k plus 1. And also some, there will be algebra which commutes with both of these SL2s, and it will be Virasora, which is a cassette Virasora algebra. And uh, I'm going to talk today exactly about this. Goddard can totally construction. So if you don't follow all these cassette stories, you can forget. Uh, it's okay. Uh, but there will be one difference. Because the purpose of the, the original paper by Goddard and Tefolius was uh, to study uh, minimal models, unitary minimal models, in terms of uh, uh, conformal series. This corresponds to rational series. So or practically, in, uh, in their paper, K was non-negative, maybe even positive integer. And today, the difference will be that K, so today, this K will be generic. In particular, I mean, what does mean generic sometimes? has to be defined for, uh, in particular, assuming that k is not rational, is sufficient. Uh, uh, why people s s uh, thought about minimal models at that time? Because mm, in minimal models, uh, uh, in some sense can be solved. All correlation functions more or less can be found. We have finitely many con uh, uh, fields in our theory, finitely many conformal blocks, everything is handled. Here I'm going to talk about case where k is generic, so we have infinitely many fields, infinitely many conformal blocks, and so on. Uh, but on, uh, on the other hand, uh, since our uh, theory is quite uh, special, it's constructed through SL2, it possesses additional symmetry. The symmetry of this SL2 is fine. And uh, it would, it means that uh, conform, the place of conform block is infinite dimensional, but we still have some other tools to work with them, and using this symmetry, we'll, we can say that we have conformal blocks, which depends depending on Local system. Uh, and if we put local systems into the game, then again we can somehow come to the manageable story where all conformal place of conformal blocks in some sense become finite dimensional, even one dimensional, and we can write down them. And then at the end of the day, in this case is give to leads to key formulas for the solution of the topology. Okay, this is uh, what the talk is going to be about. Uh, uh, I saw uh, preparing the talk. I thought to, I mean, to whom I should somehow address it. Uh, I mean, I can talk about this. I, 
I had experience to talk about this work in Japan, but, uh, to the seminar by Jim and Naomi, but uh, audience in Japan and here, of course, are completely different. Uh, the, you know, in Japan, they are careful. Maybe because the talk is recorded, I shouldn't say a lot about the differences. <laughs> but, uh, 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 I know, uh, some solution which I had in my head that I should uh, I talk to Julia because of your birthday. So, <laughs> so <laughs> don't, consider, don't consider it as a big responsibility, but please ask questions. <laughs> when I go into fast this representation theory. Okay, uh, I sh uh, here uh, wrote something about the final cell too. I think I should uh, d give at least some definitions. Uh, so, uh, uh, if, uh, if final cell two was not a final, then I think that it has generators E, H, and F which are given by standard matrices. All standard commutation relations like each E equal to E. Uh, if I count to a finest of two, Then uh, I will have uh, infinitely many generators. So a finest of two is a, a tensor product of a, not a finest of two with a ring of uh, Laran series plus central extension, and sometimes also. I think previous time when I uh, talked about this, I made mistake in one of these three formulas. Yeah. And maybe this I continue to do so. Okay, a final cell 2 is a uh, loop algebra. So its generators, we have K with the central, and other generators are like EM, which is E T tensor of T in power N, Fn is F tensor T in power N, and similar to H. And uh, it, the commutation relations are like optimization of this one. So if you commute, take commutator of H, N, and EM, you get to e n plus n, other in similar fa fashion, let me write uh, the, la the commutation of f n uh, e n f m. So first we have h with index n plus n, and plus we have central extension. So we have n delta n plus m zero times two. K, K is the central. Uh, X is any letter. Yeah. <coughs> okay, uh, this is an. Maybe I should put some title here. So this is an algebra. Um, it depends what do you mean by uh, a fine root, but uh, standard picture is the following. So you have E0, which is E, and you also have, here you have F1. And, uh, uh, and these two roots are simple roots. The, uh, this Lie algebra elements correspond to simple uh, positive roots for fine and the commutator, which is proportional to H1, 
iz kad sponto imagine vizuta. I can add this simple root of this guy's imaginary. Any other questions? The, the work which I am presenting is actually the work on representation theory of some vertex algebra and so on, but I'm not going to, I tried not to present it as a work of representation theory, so maybe half of my talk will be about representation uh, theory, but then I switch to something else, but it's, maybe still I cannot give you spirit of what we are doing without uh, this list of uh, generators and relations. Uh, as I said, representation series, it means that we have to consider some representations. Uh, if we start off representation vessel 2, then uh, the typical representations are uh, can be either finite dimensional representations. You can take some CN and uh, it has a structure of SL2 module. Or you can take Verma uh, uh, modules. So Verma modules generate by some vector V lambda such that E of V lambda is equal to zero and then H of V lambda, v lambda is equal to Lambda, V lambda, and the whole space is V lambda, F V lambda, F square V lambda, and so on. Mm -hmm. The fine dimensional representations are quotient of this, uh, of representation of this type. So if your lambda is a positive, is non negative integer, then there is a singular vector of this Fermat model, takes a quotient and comes to fine dimensional representation, which is also the representation of the group. And Good in many respects, but principles are the uh, Now we move to affine. Uh, for affine algebra, there is almost no uh, fine dimensional representation. To be more precise, there are fine dimensional representations exist only k is equal to x by zero. And I'm going to consider, and k will act by this level, k small, which, as I said, is going to be generic, so not zero. So there will be no fine dimensional representations, but uh, with Verma models, everything is okay. We can t consider Verma models. Now it will depend on two numbers, not just one lambda, also on this k. So it is generated by the vector, v lambda k which is annihilated by the generators uh, which correspond to positive roots. So, using Dima's comment, uh, I can say that it is annihilated by, uh, it corresponds to simple roots. So, I can write this E0 V lambda K is equal to F1 V lambda K is equal to 0. It should be eigenvector for the Cartan part. So, here I have one Cartan now we have two elements, which one of them is H0, which of this picture below lives here, here, H0 and K lives. And K capital X by number K. And all other elements generate uh, the model. So, this V small lambda K is the uh, highest weight vector. And the whole representation, we have V lambda, ah, maybe, okay, we have V lambda K. You can act by F0, F0 squared, and so on. And you can act by E minus 1, and so on. And now the picture somehow becomes two-dimensional. We have some 
you have your root lattice you know, is two dimensional. So uh, the weights form some angle in the plane. Uh, there are certain particular cases or special. So here in the cassette story, I had a cell two on the level k, k plus one, and as I said, k is generic. But I also have a cell two on the level one, and one is not generic in any sense. Uh, so for cell two on the level one. Uh, there are certain small representations. And uh, 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 these small representations are called integrable. Another word of them is integrable. And the, uh, this word comes. And in, in the theory, in the test theory of the finite dimensional the algebras, we used to say that the representation is integrable if it, can, it is actually a representation of the Lie group. For a finite cell 2, one should be very careful talking about group because it is infinite dimensional group, so how to speak about infinite dimensional manifolds? I mean, this is possible, but uh, it is, one should be very careful about this. But for example, for, uh, simple answer about this integrability is the following. So inside this SL, a fine SL2 algebra, you have a lot of finite dimensional uh, Lie subalgebras. Usually it's finite dimensional SL2s. For any root, you can take opposite root and generate a SL2. So this integrability condition means that the representation is integrable uh, as a representation of any of this SL2, finite dimensional SL2. So for any finite dimensional subgroup, it is integrable. And this, so do we not think, we are not thinking about the dimensional group, we are saying, what is this? Level is a value on, uh, of this central element k, k. k. So uh, k is a central element, so on any reduced representation, it will act by number. And this number is called level. And the level. Okay? So in this Fermat model, I define that this k capital x by this number k small on the highest weight vector, but because this k capital commutes with any uh, element, it will act by the same number on the whole representation. And now I'll send the representation of SL2 uh, of the level 1, which are small. Um. Uh. I don't know. In, in, uh, so th this integral representation are uh, probably one of the best analogs of the finite dimensional representation of the finite dimensional algebra. Uh, for some two, there are two uh, integrable representations. The highest weights are zero and one. So the quotients of the Fermat modules. Or, so we have L zero one which is actually a quotient of V01 by some ideal, and L11, which is a quotient by V11 by some ideal. And each of them is uh, given as follows. The sum of sum of uh, N and Z F here and here sum of integer here we have sum of a half integer of the same uh, summons and this F alpha is a fork module over Heisenberg Algebra uh, generators actually this H. So 
uh, in uh, each of these f is a fog model of the Heisenberg algebra. Uh, but the statement is that you can define on this space action of the whole affine SL2. So you can also define action of E and F. And this uh, definition is given by the formulas E of Z is a, some ex normally ordered as exponent of square root of 2 so field 5 of Z and F of Z is normally ordered exponent of minus square root of 2 of 5 Z. And 5 Z field uh, how to say if you're familiar with the story about boson fermion correspondence or the vertex operators then probably you know this formulas if not then you can ignore details of this construction I hope the idea of what we're doing will be clear even without this detail. Maybe for completeness, I will uh, add one more type of models. Uh, sort of models for SL2 on the level. Uh, yes, uh, uh, yes. In order to say this, maybe I should say, uh, return back to finite dimensional SL2 for a minute. Um, uh, how in applications, quite, of course, maybe. Most important for the applications in, uh, is, a, is a two dimensional representation of SL2. But in some other applications, you come not with representation of SL2 via matrices, but via representation of SL2 uh, through differential operators. Uh, so you can write E as, okay, let me, I'll, The, how to say, because there's not un unique way to write, uh, I want to write formulas which would agree to, to the, with my following, with the following formula. So we write E as a, some derivative, H as a, maybe minus 2x, ah, z. Do we have? But maybe x minus 2x dx plus principal parameter lambda and f goes to minus x square dx plus lambda x. This representation of the Lie algebra SL2 via differential operators. Uh, geometrically, if you want, you can think that SL2, SL2 as a group acts on uh, P1, which is SL2 modular Barrett subgroup by fractional linear transformation. And inside P1, you can find a plane, just delete one point. Uh, it will be not invariant with respect to group, but still, your, uh, for any element of the algebra, you have vector field on this P1. You can restrict this vector, vector field on this A and get formulas like this. To be more precise, in this way, you get the, this part, and this part is comes for the connection, certain twist. And there is affinization of these formulas. SO2 head, uh, and this affinization is called Okimoto representation. And it goes, it looks like this. So E of Z goes to beta of Z, H of Z goes to do I have square root of two kappa T 
и фаузи. Maybe I change font for this file. Not to be consistent. So, this field and this field are different fields. Uh, I mean, both of them are fields, but they appear on different pages. <laughs> uh, minus two gamma of z bit of z and f of z goes to minus gamma square plus square root of two kappa uh, d5 of z gamma of z plus k d gamma of z where I used here a lot of notations which was not which I didn't explain so uh, some of them are quite simple for example I use kappa this is a short notation for k plus 2 and it's quite often it appears uh, I use e of z but I didn't define I, uh, I defined only more on the operators en but for formulas like this it's Actually, I already did it page before. Uh, it is convenient to organize them in terms of generating series. So these are generating series of the generators of algebra. So this is E, similar for H, similar for F. <coughs> and uh, phi is bosonic field. And beta gamma uh, stands for beta gamma system. So beta of z gamma of double double is one of minus zero. Uh, but no, 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 I can, uh, this I can say it. No. So here uh, we can we should write phi is the sum of a n minus n to minus n plus a zero log z plus some operator q a so this is again generating function of some opera operators and this a is satisfy Heisenberg algebra relation and a zero and q also Um, so uh, if you compare these two formulas then this beta gamma stands for uh, dx and x so here we have dx this is beta here we have x dx this is gamma times beta here we have x squared dx this is gamma cube beta and phi is a replacement of this number lambda before we had one parameter lambda, which was somehow geometric response to twist, and now after this affinization, this one parameter becomes a whole infinitely many set of infinitely many generators. Uh, and there is also one additional term, which is derivative respect to gamma, which was not present in finite dimensional case. So in this sense, affinization is more difficult. Uh, other questions? Uh, maybe I, I can also comment why I say that. So here, uh, if we think about size of representations, that if we think uh, in SL2 we have three generators, E, H, and F. So size of the representation is like three fields, three sets of generators. If they were commuting, they are not, but if they are, uh, then you'll have, uh, you can compute generating function. And actually, von Heiberg of its theorem says us that we can compute character assuming they are commuting. And here we represent them in terms of three more simple fields. 
like beta, gamma, which are form some sort of Heisenberg algebra, and also phi. And this representation was small because here everything was represented on just one field. So much smaller representation. Okay. Uh, maybe I believe I'm close to the middle of the talk, so maybe I should define the subject of the type. Cassette decomposition. Oh, it's too early. Maybe good point. Uh, again, I first illustrated via fine dimensional example. Uh, in for the place of SL2, SL2. We can take tensor product of two fine dimensional representations. For example, we can take product C2 times C2. And uh, we know quite well that this will be sum of one dimensional and three dimensional representations. If we generalize it, take tensor product C2 times any Cn. Uh, then uh, uh, it will be again sum of two cn minus one plus c n plus one. Uh, mm -hmm. And in principle, we can uh, then we, we can somehow analytically continue with respect to the sun. So here n was non-negative. Probably oh, it's a positive integer, but uh, we can replace the CN by Verma module, and then on the right side we get sum of V lambda minus one, V lambda plus one, sum of two Verma modules. To be more precise, here I should say that lambda is generic. Or maybe I should say that lambda is not equal to minus one. Otherwise, this is not. Here is not direct sum, and there should some projective some projective model. Now, if we do the same for uh, uh, now, we're trying to do analog of this for finest of two. What is the analog of C two uh, for uh, uh, in a fine case? As I said, we have no uh, finite dimensional representations for generic level. Oh. You know, for non-zero level, but the best what we can achieve is our integral representation. So let's take integral representations and simple integral representation can spawn to level one. So we take just one of two integral representations, L i one. So this i is i is a zero to one, and take tensor product with the Verma model V lambda k. Then the theorem uh, essentially this is Goddard Cantor Olive theorem, but uh, as I said, it is not written in the paper. Uh, said that this tensor product is equal to direct sum of Uh, so uh, where so this is a representation of SL2 on the level one. This is a representation of SL2 on the level k. On the right side we have a diagonal SL2, which is the sum of these two, and uh, it have uh, it has level k plus one. So this is SL2 on the level k plus one. And this uh, additional guy, a representation of additional guy, uh, which is a zero sort. 
which is Cassiopeia. So we have a, a huge algebra which centralizes this affinus L2 in the uh, here. Comparing the sizes, as I said, uh, uh, for generic K, affinus L2 is the size of three fields. This is also one field. So overall, we have four fields here, and three goes to affinus L2 in the LK plus one. So one remaining actually hidden in this virus. So what's that? Uh, it is uh, something. Some for, uh, uh, I'll, so uh, you didn't. Uh, you can't ask about B because you probably know that B squared is uh, like minus k plus two over k plus three. Yes, it uh, knows the central charge and. Uh, and the P uh, then is uh, written in terms of this lambda and this B. So prox P is, if you want me, I'll look to the uh, formula which I prepared, but approximately lambda plus 1 over something like K plus 2, K plus 3. Somehow, yes. So it is uh, somehow linear, it depends on lambda. And... We have the square roots. And because we work in the, here, we work in the theory normalization, not in new class of notation of epsilon of omega background. Yeah. Omega background, we will have more. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Can I now erase this? Um, well, uh, I haven't explained how this uh, Viraso, additional Virasora comes uh, well, uh, uh, to the game, and probably will not. Um, again, I try to I can try to illustrate it in finite-dimensional situations. So, finite-dimensional situation, we have uh, a bit uh, one one more decomposition, which is maybe even closer to this one, we can take tensor product of two finite dimensional precision, CN and CM. And on the right side, we get the sum of CL, where L runs from N plus M to the N minus M, and suggests that L plus N plus M is even. I think now it's correct. Mm -hmm. uh, mm. So uh, in this case, so this uh, sum summation here is a fine dimensional analog of the summation here, and you can ask where where is this multiplicity spaces, and unfortunately no, this multiplicity spaces are one dimensional. But still, what acts here and commutes with a uh, SL2? And we know what acts. It is a, we can compute, construct Casimir of SL2. There is a Casimir of SL2, which is EF plus FE plus I square over 2. Uh, it commutes with, uh, with SL2. And we can cons consider Casimir of diagonal SL2 minus Casimir of first SL2 minus Casimir of second SL2. And this operator, let me denote by omega, it acts on this C L plus 1, and for different L, it will act with different eigenvalues. And this Virasora, which you have here, is the affinization of this one operator. So as I said, this virasor is like one one field, so the definition of just one operator. We cannot expect very interesting algebra from with one operator. So therefore we find the case this quite uh, silly algebra. But 
Okay, this is a Cosset decomposition. In finite dimensional case, yes. In the infinite dimensional, you, you remember, we have a quotient of 1 over kappa, uh, and therefore it is not bilinear. So in infinite dimensional case, we, we should divide Casimir, should normalize Casimir due to this normalization. Okay, this is a cassette decomposition. Uh, so I'm already close to the title of my talk, uh, but still, where are the highest rate vectors? And I can define them to you. Here we have the de decomposition where, uh, so we have summation over L, where L runs from Z plus I over 2, integer or half integer numbers. And for any L, we have highest rate vector here. So this is the highest vector, which is the subject of the paper of today's talks. So UL of lambda is the highest weight vector in uh, the corresponding model. V lambda plus 2L K plus 1 times tensor the representation of the gross around. The theorem says that such vector exists. Mm. Uh, but even if you know that such vector exists, you can ask, can you write down a formula? Uh, and as usual, we know that uh, so from the f for the first vectors, formulas are quite are possible. So examples. That if we take zeros vector, it is just the product of the highest rate vectors here. If we take the next guy, it will be a sum of two terms. If you ask me to write down the next guy, so this is the first, second, third guy, then here we'll get have six terms. Maybe this is all information which I'm going to put on the board. And the next one have something like 20 terms, and at this point our computation stops. So, as usual, write down formulas for the highest vectors is not is difficult. On the other hand, uh, as usual, the formulas for highest rate vectors simplifies if we go to free to bosonization. So, if we replace the Verma model here, by the Wakimoto model. Now let me state three theorems. <coughs> Theorem one. U minus L of lambda is an exponent of sum minus sum of a J E J Room two.
and zero three. Uh, three point function. is equal here we have Um, okay. I'm omitting some details in this formula uh, for clear reasons. Actually, at this point, um, I will stop my representative parts and we'll talk about application stuff like this. But uh, this, so this main, this main results, uh, and I wrote them without introducing a lot of notations. Let me try to help at least with this. So first theorem gives a formula for this highest weight vector. Uh, so uh, the vector here. Is it just the product of the highest weight vector here and one of the highest weight vector for the four modules here? The fact that we have decomposition on the right side of this formula somehow corresponds to the fact that for integrable models we have decomposition of the sum of four. So we take highest weight vector here, multiply by highest weight vector here. This will be not desired vector u, but in order to obtain the vector u from this, I apply it to Operator. The operator is actually simple because this gammas are, comes from the motorization of the uh, one module. And this E corresponds to uh, uh, another module. So this gammas commute with the cell, cells commute with E. And this E is commute with the cells and commute with gammas. So this is quite simple operator. Mm. In the presentation theory of vertex algebra, uh, this somehow could be compared with the fact that single vector for Rosora algebra corresponds to Jack Jack symmetric functions. But this result is much more simple. Yes. Yes, this is just a mod of the vertex operator. Yes. So this E1 is this one. So you can say that we have certain field G of Z, which is a E1 of Z times gamma 2 of Z. And here we have exponent of minus G. One. First dimension. No, I couldn't say that I have uh, 
we have several uh, two proofs of this theorem, but uh, zero explanations. I would say so. It is expected for many reasons, but in the proof, uh, proofs actually quite simple. You just you calculate it. It's an easy com computation, but easy computation is not explanation. I have no. Uh, theorem, uh, in theorem one, uh, in principle, you, you can complain. I said, so I promised I will study concept decomposition, so take Verma model times integrable model and decompose. But here I cheated. Instead of Verma model, I'll substitute Wakimoto model. Of course, there is a morphic for general values parameter, but still, it is another decomposition. But here, this is a scalar product, Chapala form, computed for Verma model. So to be more honest, here, this U, if you are seeing this U as a element of Wakimoto model, I take the image, its, its image into Verma, and then compute scalar product. So this is uh, a norm, honest norm for Verma. No. no. How to say? So the scalar product which we use here is scalar product for for which e dagger is equal to f, and it is doesn't it cannot be said that it is. Uh, so what does it mean in terms of so beta dagger is equal to all this stuff? So this is difficult scalar product. Uh, even the fact that this norm is have this, this such factorized form is uh, uh, not trivial. So if you write, if, so here I do computation thermo model. So I should take formula like this or another one. So we'll get six terms. I compute scalar products. I'll get extra six by six, 36 terms. Okay, some of them are zeros, but like 10 overall will be non-zero. I sum them all and I get factorized form, product of linear functions. Mm. I'm eating some details. I would say that the uh, that uh, po some of them correspond to the fa to cases where this model becomes reducible, and some of them correspond to cases where this model becomes reducible. But uh, there are some, uh, there are actually a lot of details because points where this model become reducible, the number grows quadratically. And here a number of terms is linear. So there is some sort of huge cancellation. The Verma model was uh, uh, defined as an induced model. So it is, we have five split vector, E and F annihilated and so on. And the Wakimoto model defined via realization through differential operators, if you want. Affinization of this so defined by explicit construction. And we can, so we can't like, uh, think about Wakimoto model, model, model. For generic value of superparameters, this model is isomorphic. Therefore, uh, theorem one is, is, is so in theorem one, I'm cheating. I replaced model by another one, but I replaced model by isomorphic one. So you probably can tolerate this cheating. Probably not. <laughs> yes, and the the last theorem is essentially the main theorem. Uh, so here we computing. Not just scalar products, but our mat uh, arbitrary matrix elements of which correspond to uh, these three high spread vectors. So if you take nu equals zero, for example, n equals zero, then this becomes identity operator, and this theorem reproduces previous one. In the I know, like mathematical physical language, you should compare this in your head with DOZZ formula for Liouville theory. Also, you have four Eupson functions in numerator, three Eupson function denominator, and also such tri triangular stuff. This is like some sort of holomorphic version, DOZZ formula. 
this t functions t l of lambda is a product uh, if, if you allow me I'll draw pictorially is a product of an integer points inside triangle and the sides of this triangle one of uh, uh, the coefficients here one of them is one and another minus kappa inverse or they will be epsilon one and epsilon two if I come to uh uh uh, now I see you're, you're confused. I don't know what is the so uh, there could be several sources of this confusion. Some sources that the here I cheated. For example, actually here I should I didn't I ignore the normalization. I should normalize by zero part. So actually, we believe three-point functions are usually given by some uh, double gamma functions, or like this. And here are not just gamma functions, but ratios of these gamma functions. Uh, but uh, up to this, uh, these parameters mu, nu, lambda are generic. So in this sense, fields are generic. The analogy with DOZZ should go should uh, in head should go like this. So in DOZZ story. You have uh, two Verasor algebras, left and right. We have the same, same central charge and so on. And here you have a fine SL2 and Verasor algebra. So in both cases, you have some sort of gluing. In DOZZ story, you assume that this Verasor algebra has the same central charge, and also the, uh, you consider only fields which have the same momentum. Here, uh, the central charges, whatever, they relate. This K and this B are related via this formula. Some, we are not saying they are equal, but we have, and also momenta also related. Here we have lambda, and this P of lambda is given down to this lambda. Yes, yes, yes. This is, so in DOZZ we have Kolmorov anti holomorphic gluing, which is maybe more motivated physically, but here we still have some sort of thing. And you the graph of the pair, and the chemical So we, uh, how to say, so we, we have, uh, a vert for, we have highest weight vectors here, and for each of them we, we have vertex operator. Due to operator state correspondence. For L equals zero, it will be just a product of highest weight of, of corresponding primaries here. Other uh, will be some descendants. Of them. <coughs> uh, okay. Um, when should I stop? How much time do I have? Uh, let's say 10 minutes. Is it, uh, how, 10? 10 minutes. Mm, no, I, I mean, I stated the main theorem. So, uh, uh, how, I, in principle, I can stop at any point. But, um, <coughs> um, if you want, uh, but, pro, pro, Yeah, I promised some applications, yes. Uh, but always I can say this, as you see, no time. Application next time, next year. <laughs> um, can I skip, skip Silberg integrals? Does anybody in the audience 
fun of Selberg integral. Uh, Sel Selberg. Selberg. You are fun? <laughs> then you you are not. <laughs> okay, l let me say about another application. This uh, I will l l let to the question part. <laughs> so uh, <coughs> so uh, uh, this is a so. If, uh, here I had an identity in terms of the representations. <coughs> this is a, already some sort of identity in terms of matrix elements. <coughs> and from matrix elements, you can compute conformal blocks. So I will use notation psi uh, for conformal blocks of the Virasora algebra, uh, for SL2. So I take some V lambda, uh, vertex separator for SL2, lambda 2, vertex separator for SL2, another uh, vertex separator for SL2, which is lambda 3. So this is a, uh, here is like 1, 1, here is like Zx, whatever. So this is a conformal block <coughs> for SL2. Similarly, like uh, we have defined, can define conformal blocks for the Verasora, which I de will denote by Z. Maybe I will even not write formula, just write, say that this is conformal block for Verasora. <coughs> uh, then there's the decomposition uh, using this uh, formal, exact formula for matrix elements leads to the form of, uh, formula like this. So conformal blocks for SL2 and the level K. K. So conformal blocks SL2 and level K should have K somewhere. Is equal to the sum. Uh, conformal blocks of the SL2 and the level K plus 1 times Conformal blocks for the Virasor of this B squared. Uh, and such bilinear relation uh, can be interpreted using a GT. So, uh, as we know, Virasor are conformal blocks. They are uh, uh, equal to, they are equal to Nikrasov partition functions on some Gizikov space, or whatever, in Santon modular space, shifts of rank 2. And uh, a fine SL2 corresponds to instantons with the presence of surface defect, or Lamon. So if you look to the corresponding parameters, then the picture is the following. So here we have Lamont, so we have C2 where with defect around one line. And what we get here is a blow up. So we have a blow up of the C2 with a defect along one line. This corresponds to contribution of one point, and this corresponds to the last point. Yeah. So what I'm saying is that it follows from this theorem that we have uh, so we have a uh, blow up, na na like Nakajima, you show up in Nikrasov if you want, blow up equations with the presence of surface defect. I added in Nikrasov because they are not present on Nakajima Yashoka papers. I think, as far as I know, they are present only in Nikrasov paper, only like a conjecture. I mean, here, he has many reasons to believe that Nakajima Yashoka proofs works, and Nakajima also say, thinks so, but there's no written proof at least. But from this we can just uh, have a, we can prove it. using representation theory we prove uh, uh, we prove such blow up equations. Maybe I should write some words so so corollary corollary Nakajima Yashioka blow up uh, with surface. Yes. 
<coughs> and in, in particular, we can uh, just repeat what Nikrasov said about this part. Namely, we can take limit where k goes to infinity of this equation and reproduce Kiev formula. No, no, this in this formula there is no solution. Penle, uh, let me, uh, I mean, let me state the zero just uh, as a full sentence at least. Uh, but it will be a long sentence. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, we have this equality. equality. Then uh, psi uh, satisfy. Up to now, not Pendevere by, by some non autonomous equation, Knizhny Zemological type equation. Then, if you take classical limit where k goes to infinity, then psi will have behavior is like this exponent 1 over k times some function s. And s already satisfies something like Pendevere. This is Hamilton Jacobi function in the view. But this is just information about psi. If you look to this equation and substitute it here, you will get the following. You will get that the sum of uh, here you have z will be square t. Uh, here you will also have some term like derivative of s with respect to some sigma n. Two additional terms uh, equal to uh, so here where k goes to infinity, both of this psi uh, they diverge uh, because of this expo due to this exponent. But diversion part cancels, and then uh, you'll get some exponent of s minus some. Minus some corrections, and then it can be shown that this is actually equal to tau function of the Penderev equation. So this is uh, like a <coughs> so this is again like a quantization of the Penderev story. Penderev story appears only in the classical limit. It depends on uh, what kind of conform blocks you uh, consider here. I believe any conformal block, uh, any any Pendeve equation have interpretation like this. Nikrasov did this for Pendeve 6 in his paper. Uh, just for the exercise, we did it for Pendeve 3. But I believe any Pendeve work. Uh, I think one also worked, but for one uh, definition of conformal blocks, it's a bit subtle. And probably for one, this uh, theorem which we, we have here are not sufficient. We have to find analogs of the theorem for irregular vertex operators, uh, which sounds like a good problem for a good student. Uh, I think I'm already in depth with respect to this 10 minutes, which I had. Uh, 15 minutes ago. Uh, no, uh, <laughs> uh, um, uh, about Selberg, uh, uh, what I, I yes, another application of the story is a uh, is a follow. We, uh, maybe. Okay, I'm going to run down as usual as before some formal, but I have no understanding and better and actually any comments is welcome. So uh, standard Selberg integral uh, 
is the following the integral uh, from 0 to 1 uh, this uh, on maybe on the on the cube uh, of the following form we have a product of ti in power alpha minus 1 1 minus ti in power beta minus 1 and product for i less than j ti minus tj uh, mod uh, absolute value in power 2g and product of dti this is a Selberg integral E n alpha beta. This is a generalization of the beta integral. It, it's a bit, maybe it's one of the great results of mathematical physics that this can be computed explicitly. It has a nice format of the product of gamma function. Great format. Uh, and then, uh, maybe it was, uh, yeah, I forgot, maybe the history was that the Selber computed this and then it was forgotten for several uh, decades. Then it was somehow found again by Dyson, uh, uh, the series of matrix models and so on. Uh, uh, people interested not just in this integral cell, but in the various generalization of this integral. I'm not talking about Q differentialization, but for example, one can try to insert some some additional function here. So see this as a uh, like a vacuum, and then compute like correlation function. For example, there is a well-known uh, motto uh, integral where you insert here some like product of Ti's from i from one to k. And this is also a nice factorized form. Uh, what uh, k is any number uh, not greater than n? Or equivalent, you can insert symmetric func elementary symmetric function. In your uh, it this, this is symmetric. I, you can say that I broke symmetry, but it is not important. You can symmetrize all this. Okay. Now, uh, in this case, if we do, free, as I said, we we can use Wakimoto models, and uh, uh, for Wakimoto models, we can also use some sort of free field realization of vertex operators. And we, if we plug everything together, our matrix elements, which we compute in series three, reduce to some type of Selberg integrals. And now, what type? The type is the following. So here we can insert the following things. We have a product from E and G from, uh, okay, well, let me, E, e less than G from 1 to L plus M plus N, uh, Ti minus Tj squared, Ti in power minus 2L, 1 minus Ti in power 1 minus 2L. So L and N are uh, non negative uh, integer or half integer numbers such that, that L plus M plus N. Uh, is integer and L plus M plus N is non greater than a number of variables. Yes, it's, uh, here, here is a double product and here is a single product. Is it readable or should I? So, uh, so we have uh, we have all interactions, but for first k particles we have some additional uh, inter quadratic interaction, and plus additional interaction with the boundaries. Uh, so if without these terms, so for l equals zero and n equals one half, this integral was uh, conjectured by Forrester 20 years ago to some Kalodra Sutherland model stuff. I don't know. But it was, he couldn't compute it, but, 
quite recently, like five or ten years ago, it was computed with Q deformation, original Forrester integral, by using some modern technique, I would say. Elementary, but quite remarkable. So, I mean, it was conjecture. I'm not saying that everybody tried to solve this Forrester conjecture, but there was some work with some partial results. Even Forrester is uh, one of the best experts in this field. But at the end of the day, it was, this integral was proven. Uh, but here we have more general integral because we have also uh, some boundary interaction. We don't, probably it can be proven also using the, the this recent method. We, I don't know. I asked, but maybe they're not. But this is the thing. We get this such an Probably it also has some meaning in terms of color model. But for this, I have to look. Is it okay? Say it again. Ah, motor. Yes, two A's. But if you go to the Wikipedia page about Selberg integral, you will find the motor. This is for sure. How we come? I mean, in terms of this, how we come to the Selberg integral? Technically, it goes like this. Uh, <coughs> uh, we compute the, we use free field realization, and in free field realization, we use screening operator S, which has the form of some beta times exponent of some coefficient phi. No? Uh, 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 yes, and then integral. this is screen current, and uh, you, of course, we, we, this integral comes from the integrations. So, so. Ah, uh, maybe it is all. I try. Uh, No, I wouldn't try to write it in Katakana even. <laughs> so, uh, but then uh, uh, we use uh, you using the theorem. We when we want to compute this uh, operator acting between such vectors. So it, uh, and such vectors are obtained by the conjugation by this g. So it is natural to conjugate by some e exponent of g zero of this s. <coughs> and because beta and gamma do not commute, in this conjugation, we'll have two terms. We get b times exponent of phi plus additional terms, additional exponent of phi. So something like that, times e1. So conjugation of, uh, I, I mean, I'm giving you technical explanation. Uh, and I will s stop it in the means. So uh, conjugating s, we get sum of two terms. And then in Selberg integrals, for some terms we should take this, for some t's we should take this term, and for some t's we should take this term. And this will give you to this k L plus M plus N, which appeared now. You can symmetrize it, of course, yes. It's similar for our motor integral. I said that we insert the product of the first k variables, but instead you can insert elementary function. And difference in some binomial coefficient, of course. And what the big the is So what is symmetrization of, I mean, uh, this, uh, this I, I would say I don't know. T and minus T. I mean, 
Yeah, yeah, but if I understand correctly, Pasha is saying the following. So before I, for, in, for our motor, our motor, uh, I inserted the product T1, Tk, or after symmetrization, it is just what's called Ek, an Ek is elementary symmetric function. And here I inserted product of Ti minus Tj, square for letters non greater than k, plus product Ti in some power, minus 12, plus minus 1 minus Ti in some power, and what will give the symmetrization? And after such long preparation, I answer just I don't know. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure it will be. So, I don't know. So people, for example, tried a lot to compute uh, Selberg integrals with insertion of some Jack polynomial, for example, with, with this coefficient related to G. But what we are inserting here that is, comes from somehow from rational theory. It doesn't have G inside. <coughs> so it was just some symmetric function. I agree with your point about uh, negative powers. On the other hand, you can always somehow absorb them into beta and multiply it by remaining terms. So, oh, how to say? You will get some rational function, but then you can write common denominator and ask me what is the meaning of the numerator. So your, your question is legitimate. Mm -hmm. <coughs> um, uh, I, no, I sh my, maybe I already concluded that 15 minutes ago. If not, then I would conclude with this, uh, the word that, uh, for me, I would like to think about this as a, still as an example of some story. So we have a, uh, Two, uh, uh, two algebras, which and here it corresponds to the blow up, and we can see the assumption of rank two. Even quite naively, there is a room here for generalization. One can consider high rank, and also one can consider here another number, and go to his or surfaces. And uh, corresponding vertex algebras exist. Um, they have continuous symmetry, so therefore it is still believed that they correspond to some sort of key formulas, which are not known full generality. And they correspond to some, uh, uh, these are two-dimensional, uh, uh, two-dimensional conformal theory, so you can think about this as a boundary of some certain three-dimensional topological field theory. And this series, I think, is studied recently. There is a nice review by Dimovta, Kreuzek, Gir, and one or more author, were like 200 pages, actually exactly about this story, where we have arbitrary rank, an arbitrary number here, and... But... Yeah, this is exactly my level. Some just my level of understanding. But what precisely, in terms of also also some detail that in terms of quantum groups, this correspond to difficult to not semi simple categories. Some quantum groups and lot of unity and quite interesting categories. No, I would like to understand more about these three dimensional theories, but. Um, I would just solve it again, comment about this. Uh, may I assume that I stopped here? Yeah, you can stop. Are there more questions or comments? <coughs> okay, everybody is very happy, so let's uh, thank you, Michelle, very much.